Hi, it's Tony Chapman. I'm the host of Chatter That Matters, presented by RBC. Small business is the heart of the Canadian economy, and it's in our collective interest to keep them beating strong. So we put together a six-part video series to give small business owners everything they need to drive their top line and bottom line. You'll hear from people like Yujual Arkagals. He's a cultural anthropologist. Angela Donnelly from Corthentic. We've got Joe Mimran, incredible entrepreneur. Chris Barrett from Operatic. Christian Dion from Broadsign. Finally, we have Laurie Darlington from RBC. And on this episode, I chat with. You know you're someone of value and relevance when people know you by your first name. Cher, Madonna, LeBron. When it comes to fashion, branding, retail in Canada, it comes to creativity, that name is Joe. As in Joe Mimran, created Club Monaco, Joe Fresh, has designed thousands of products. And what he offers in terms of what matters most, driving traffic, getting people to buy products, creating smiles, well, second to none. Please welcome to Chatter That Matters, Joe Memorand. Well, thank you, Tony. Always a pleasure to be with you. Take us back to the early days and when you got into the garment and fashion business. I'll go right back to the beginning. I joined my brother and my mother when they first started. They were in business for six months trying to sell uh, dresses. We opened a factory right on Richmond Street, six sewing machines. We put together a shoestring budget and we started making dresses and selling them. My mother was pattern making, my brother was sales, and I was everything else. What was really remarkable uh, at the time was that the world has not changed that much. 95% of the business was done by 5% of the brands. And the retailers at that time also had tremendous power. It dawned on us uh, that you know, you had to have a brand. So we went down to New York. I met with Oscar de la Renta and we said, look, we want to take your brand into Canada. We, we've got this amazing factory making these beautiful dresses. And we sold them on it. We're coming back to Toronto. I turned to my brother and I said, you know, why are we paying them a royalty? Why don't we create our own brand? And you know, the wonderful thing about naivety is that you don't realize how difficult it truly is to create your own brand. We made a list of designers and on the top of our list was Alfred Sung. And I said, look, we want to make you famous. We want you to be uh, our designer. Within three years, he hit the cover of McLean magazine as the king of uh, Canadian fashion. The following year in 84, I came up with this idea of this unisex concept, which became Club Monaco. We tried to sell it wholesale, couldn't sell it wholesale. Uh, nobody could understand that we wanted uh, unisex, men and women. And we thought we had clout with the Eatons and the Bay, and they said, we don't get it. We don't understand what you're trying to do. So we had to open up a retail store, and that's how Club Monaco began. It's very insightful to say, I think there's an opportunity. This is a, a need that's not being served. This is the concept of the unisex. What gave me the confidence at a young age to say, you know, I might see something that all these other brands and retailers have missed. When we opened that first store on Queen Street, we invested at that time what we thought was a fortune of money, which was a half a million dollars in marketing. We really put money into the marketing, but we also had put a tremendous amount of energy and effort into the development of the product, into the development of the offering, into the development of the branding, and it all had to come together. It was really, um, you know, a big risk that we took. I always ask this of entrepreneurs, are you willing to, to assume the risk it takes to truly be an entrepreneur? Talk to me about what you would advise to the entrepreneurs that have chosen to become merchants and retailers. What's your advice for them to say, here's the best way to put your best foot forward? Are you offering something that the consumer truly wants? Or are you offering something that you personally like and you think is the next great thing? I think hitting that segment, that, that seam in the market is critical to the success of any business. I also think you have to have a vision. You have to have a vision for your business. You have to be inspired uh, by your vision and you've got to inspire other people with respect to your vision. I think that's extremely important. You have to have the resilience to take the lows, the highs, and really manage your way through it. 
and the knowledge, everything takes capital. So how do you attract capital? How do you use capital? And if you don't have the skill set in one area, go out and get the skill set. Get a partner. Do whatever you have to do to make yourself a complete entrepreneur. What do you love to see when somebody takes advantage of their storefront? I like a point of view. Give me a point of view that's fresh. When we did mannequins in the windows of Club Monaco, we didn't use the standard mannequins. We used a flat board mannequin that had never been seen before. I look for uniqueness. I look for a point of view. I look for engagement. And those elements have not changed. The pillars of retail used to be, you know, convenience, your location, location, location. It was your merchandise and store. But today, a lot of that is being neutered by companies like Amazon that treat a phone like a vending machine. What do we need to do to kind of engage what I call the head, heart, and hands? How you're thinking and feeling and ultimately buying. Well, it's all in individual presentation and it's in the uh, clarity of offer. So what is the environment that I'm going into? And when I go into that environment, and I, am I being wowed? There's got to be a complete and total dedication to everything the consumer sees. I was so taken by our brand essence. I wanted it to be like a play on Broadway. Everything had to come together. The music, the people, the way you enter a store, every aspect. You know, our first store was designed by very famous designers, Yabu Pushelberg. They had a beat on what was going on. We had a boxing ring in the middle of our store. We had a cafe at the back of the store. Because on Queen Street at the time, the traffic count, maybe four people every hour. And so we had to do unique things to attract consumers to the store. Today, a big part of being in retail is finding the staff that will act on your Broadway play. What's your advice to retailers to finding that kind of staff versus just being there for an hour's wage? It, it comes back to what I said. If the vision is clear, then you will attract the right kind of people. If your vision is not clear and you don't have a view on where your brand is and what it represents, then you will not get the right people. You need to have that integrity of brand. This is what you've got to work on. And I think when you build that kind of an organization, you know, it's so powerful because even C players become A plus players. You know, they're so motivated. They believe so much in what the goal is and the concept is. Today's world with digital marketing, for example, the ability to fly fish in through social media. Any advice to retailers to say it's important to still find the resources to tell people your story? Yeah, I think it's all about storytelling. It used to be about the product, which I still say is incredibly important, but because of uh, e-commerce and, and sort of the ability to source product from all over the world very easily. So now it's like, okay, you got great product, but what story are you telling me? I'm selling stories, not just products. And I think those stories are so important. I'm going to be talking with Joe Mimran. Joe is one of the gurus in fashion and branding. And I learned three things. From him. First of all, stop telling your story and start being part of the consumer story. And what unmet needs can you serve? Things that are going to get them excited and energized. As an entrepreneur, you've got to understand risk and reward. You've got to have an appetite for greatness. You have to assemble all the pieces. And if you don't understand capital, you don't understand merchandising, surround yourself with people that do. And when you're out there, make sure that you see that story unfold, but not from your eyes, but from the consumers. And if you engage how they think and how they feel, and most importantly, how they behave, which I measured by them taking out their card and buying something from you. That is a great retailer. Joe Mimran, you are one of a kind, and I'm so honored again that you're sharing your wisdom with, uh, with us in Chatter That Matters. Thank you, Tony. I really appreciate the time.